It might appear to you that NFAs are more powerful than DFAs given their epsilon transitions and power set as the range, but turns out they both are equivalent. In theory of computation, we say that two machines are equivalent if they recognize the same language. Turns out that no matter what language an NFA can recognize, there exists a corresponding DFA that can recognize it as well. Hence, NFAs recognize the class of regular languages. In this lecture, we shall explore the theorem every non-deterministic finite automaton has an equivalent deterministic finite automaton, which is proved by the technique of proof by construction. The central idea is to construct a DFA that can simulate the given NFA. Earlier, I've shown you that if an NFA has n states, it can transition to any of the 2 to the power n subsets of states, which is basically the power set of the states. So each subset of states corresponds to one of the possibilities that the DFA must remember. For a start, the DFA that can simulate an NFA with n states should have 2 to the power n states. Let an NFA be formally defined by this phi tuple. The corresponding DFA would have uh, the finite set of states, which will be the power set of the states in NFA. And it would have the same alphabet. And the transition function is pretty interesting. As the DFA should have a transition for every state and for every symbol, the transition table size will blow up exponentially with the size of number of the states in NFA. Yet, it is finite and can be populated. The transition function can be formulated this way. The start state of DFA would be the set containing the start state of NFA. The set of accepting states of DFA would be all the subsets that contain the accepting states of the NFA. With such clear construction of DFA, it can be seen that it simulates the NFA in a straightforward way. Adding epsilon transitions to the construction slightly modifies the transition function as well as the start state definition. But the DFA construction principle remains the same. If we run both these DFA and NFA in parallel on a given input string, at every step in the computation, the DFA enters a state corresponding to the subset of states that the NFA could be in. Let me visualize this with an example. You are already familiar with this NFA. I'll show you how to construct a corresponding DFA. And to do that, let me put up the formal construction steps I outlined moments ago right there. As there are three states in the NFA, the corresponding DFA will have 2 to the power 3, which is 8, 8 number of states, uh, for which I'm going to draw the transition table right now. The transition function of DFA is defined on the set R given a character C. It would transition to set of states that is a union of all the individual transitions that happen in the NFA on character C. As empty set does not have any, any states in it, it would not go anywhere when presented with character A or B, which is what I've written right there. All right, so earlier I made a statement for that statement to make sense. Um, you know, let's consider the state Q1. For Q1, there is no outward arrow transition for character A, so we map it to the empty set. For the character B, it goes to Q2. For Q2, it goes to both Q2 and Q3 for character A, and just Q3 for character B. Here is the interesting part about this DFA construction with epsilon transition. For Q3, when it transitions on character A, 
it makes the epsilon transition back to Q3. So we write Q1, Q3. For character B, it has no transition, so it is empty set. Now, according to the definition of transition function, the transition of the state Q1, Q2 in braces is the union of transitions of the individual states Q1 and Q2 in the NFA. So for character A, it would be the union of phi and Q2, Q3. For character B, it will be Q2 union Q3. Perfect. We repeat the same for Q1, Q3, Q2, Q3, and finally Q1, Q2, Q3. There you go. Now we have the transition table for the corresponding DFA. The start state would be the set Q1, Q3, because as soon as the NFA enters at Q1, it transitions to Q3. All right, the accept states of this DFA is all the states that contain Q1, which is the accept state of NFA. With this information, we can draw the DFA, which would have these eight states. Let me start with the state phi. It transitions back to itself on character A, B. Perfect. Now let me uh, go to the state Q1. Okay, so Q1 is an accept state. So I'm going to mark it as an accept state. So if it receives character A, it's going to be mapped to phi. If it receives character B, it is mapped to the state Q2. Perfect. So now let me take care of the state Q2. Uh, if it gets the character A, it maps to Q2, Q3. If it receives character B, it's going to be mapped to Q3. I'll repeat the same procedure for all the other states in this DFA and arrive at this DFA description. Now I haven't marked the start state yet, so it's Q1, Q3. So I'm gonna point that arrow right there. All right, if you observe closely, these two states don't have inward arrows pointing to them. There's no transition that can go to these two states, so we can just remove them from this DFA. So, here is the six state DFA, the simplified version of what I had earlier. Um, and I'm saying that this is the equivalent for the NFA that I have right there. So let me run both of these machines on the string BABA to see how they work. Okay, so the NFA accepts the string BABA because it traces its path this way. Let's look at the DFA. There you go. So B, A, B, A is going to the accepting state. Um, yeah, so pretty much these two machines are equivalent to each other.